Alright, we are live. Welcome everyone to Let's Talk Tech. It's been a minute since I've been live on any channel. So we are streaming to Facebook, we're streaming to YouTube, and we are also streaming to Amazon Live for the first time. So make sure you check us out on Amazon Live because we are going to be diving into some tech that you need to get started if you are starting for the first time with photography. So we're going to dive into some of the technology that you need. Also share some tips that you need to kind of help you with that process. So I am joined by, I won't say a guest, but he has been on our channel before on my YouTube channel. So we got Migs in the house today. He's just going to be dropping some gems for you guys as well, as well as talking about some of the tech features that you need to get started with, um, if you want to start a business in photography or if you just want to get into it, you've never done photography before and you just want to learn how to do it, you are in the right place. So we are going to chat it up. Also drop in the chat if you're watching. Let me know who's there, where you're tuning in from, and we'll just have a conversation going. So let's go ahead and add Mr. Okay, what's going on, Mr. Miggs? What's good? What's good, man? 
Glad to be here on this good Friday. Yes, um, yes. Man, I'm, I'm excited to talk about cameras any day. So Absolutely. I'm excited for that. Yeah. <laughs> so today we are talking about, Am uh, not Amazon Live. See, I got Amazon Live stuck in my head because uh, that's one of the new things we have. So I'm going to drop in the chat for you guys real quick before we, before we get started. Carlton Noss is in the building live from Florida. Thank you for joining, man. And how you been? I haven't talked, I haven't spoken to you in a while. How's it going up there in Florida? So yeah, again, we're talking about cameras and gear. Something that we love to talk about a lot. <laughs> so how long, remind me, last time we were on the show, we talked about how long you were doing photography, but I, I forgot. So remind me again, how long you've been doing photography? So, all right. There's like an unofficial start and then there's an official start, right? Yeah. When yeah. I picked up a camera, we we're probably talking about 2014. Okay. I was using my brother's um, Canon 60D. Okay. Right. But I was shooting everything in automatic. I can't say for real, for real that I was serious about the craft at that moment. Um, maybe a year or two later, 2015, 2016. Okay. Um, I spent a weekend. I had the camera. I came to Maryland actually. Uh, spent a weekend, like locked up on YouTube. I had to learn manual. I had to learn manual. So I think that's the moment I would say, you know. So it's, it's probably uh, five or six years. Okay. Um, of, of shooting, yeah. Five or six years. Wow. And in that time, was there something like specific that you like more about photography, like any like wedding photography, event, something like that? Or is there any specific that you like better than other aspects? Yeah, I, I can say I've never done a wedding. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure. <laughs> Why well, wouldn't advise it? <laughs> Yeah. I wouldn't advise you shooting a wedding. wedding. Weddings are a lot. There's there's a lot that goes into to weddings. And Gary Jones just follow. Appreciate you for the follow on Amazon Live. Like I said, if you guys haven't been over to Amazon Live yet, go ahead and join over there because we are going to be sharing some tech so you'll be able to see exactly the tech that we we're talking about. Oh, we got Sables uh, following on Amazon Live too. Appreciate the follow. All right, so. Is there, have you ever shot any famous person? Ooh, I don't think I've done that yet. Okay. Um, no, not, not yet. No, not yet. Okay. Okay. Kanique's in the house. How's it going? Kanique? I don't know What's why up, my, Kanique? my, uh, my messages aren't showing up, but it's all good. Oh, I lied. I lied. Here we go. Add to broadcast. Let's put that down there. <laughs> technical error here we go hey how's it going Kanik? thanks for tuning in okay so for me let's let's see so i i did i've done photography professionally for about five or six years of course working for a university and during that time i was able to shoot um layla hathaway um smoky norfolk i shot um megan good and von franklin and then i was able to shoot and take a picture with um with um uh, what's his name basketball player magic johnson magic johnson i was able to uh, shoot with magic johnson so those are the only like famous people that I can that I, that famous to me that I've taken pictures of. So, so let us go into talking about gear. If you want to go ahead, we want to go ahead and get started. So, but before we do that, what are some tips for someone who's who's trying to get into photography for the first time? What are some tips that you would suggest to them getting started? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I, 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 did, I did see okay. that you, you went out for a minute, but it's all good. We're going to keep rolling. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, all right, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, so um, what are some tips that you would share for someone who's just starting into photography, trying to figure out like what gear, or what, what stuff I should do, or maybe an aspect of photography that they want to perfect? 
I would say start light. Um, and by that, okay, well, I can see where a pun could start be light there. Okay, uh, start start light. Um, in, in terms of keep your gear relatively simple. Um, and I did, I did, honestly, I did hear the I, pun. I, I like that. Yeah, you, you caught the <laughs> I caught it. I caught it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was not intended that time, but I think that would be a good one. Um, so I, you know, I only have two lenses. Uh, well, three if I'm counting my Sony. Um, I only have two lenses for my Nikon, which is my photography rig. Okay. I kept it very simple. I bought my camera in 2017. Later on that year, Sony kicks in the door. Mm. Right. 2018 mm -hmm. with the A7 I think 2017 A7 is announced. Mm -hmm. 2018 the A9 is announced. Right. And so I'm like, okay, this is not a fad. This 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 is a real thing. And so yeah, I've been waiting for Nikon to to catch up. Um, and we have seen it's taken a considerable amount of years. And also when you're when you're getting into um, a camera system, it's more so about the entirety of, of what they offer, lens, accessories uh -huh. these are things that you got to consider mm -hmm. more than just the camera body your lens will outlive your your camera body and i think canon is a testament to that in that they don't have the latest and greatest oh well, sorry they don't have a plethora of of uh mirrorless lenses which they call rf for the for the full frame right um but if you're a canon user and you've invested in all these lenses you can easily adapt them to the mirrorless body and so um there's no there's no loss there right you want to you want to see where that camera system is going where's where are they forecasting and are they consistently delivering on what they said they would right um, so i would say start light you mm -hmm. you won't have a full view of this landscape right? mm -hmm. um so start start light get a prime lens an affordable one um the nifty 50 is always a great route to go get you a 50 1.8 lens oh, okay there we go yeah yeah that, no, that's, we, we, that's one of the gear that's on the list that's on the list <laughs> okay okay <laughs> Matter of fact, yeah, no, that's the first. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that right now. Absolutely, 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 and it, it's a it's a really affordable lens. the The cost to value ratio, it's 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 way. I mean, two hundred dollars, and it looks like it's worth two thousand when you look at the image. Okay, all right. So since um, since you brought up lens, let's go ahead and switch to the gear. Since since we're talking about gear now, okay. so. Let's talk about the Nifty 50 and why you should get that versus going with the kit lens. So we know the kit lens that comes with the cameras, they're not going to give you the best quality. And let's talk about why and what's so special about the Nifty 50. Listen, the Nifty 50 was made in Santa Claus's uh, <laughs> behind the scenes shop. Um, the amount of glass that you're getting in such a small body, um, relatively small body, uh, it, it really it really makes no sense in the world, right? Um, because like, so it's not the focal length. So 50 millimeter mm -hmm. um, and 35 are really close, mm -hmm. right? But typically, the thirty-five will cost more than the fifty. Right. So I'm not. I'm not sure if the science behind this, and I am not one of those people who will deep dive on the whys. Mm -hmm. But the, the quality of glass that you're going to get in the Nifty Fifty far outweighs whatever you're going to get in your kit lens. Now, now I think we're going to make a caveat because if you're doing like landscape photography, the Nifty Fifty may not be it for you. Right. You'll probably want to go wider. And the kit lens might might offer you some value, although I'll still try to persuade you not to stick with the kit lens. Um, but if you are doing portraits, if you're doing events like 
weddings um when if you're like me most of your events will be backyard celebrations you know family gatherings and stuff like that the nifty 50 the focal length is is good enough that you can kind of work in in tighter um areas yes um and still have that natural feel 50 i think 50 is where the beginning of where our eyes naturally kind of perceive depth right that um, that 50 so. is is a good is a good um length between 35 and 85 so you get yes. that nice sweet spot so this is a great lens for portraits and, and things like that yes. and then with that 1.8 aperture that's what you want to look at you want to look at your aperture when you're purchasing lenses so yeah um these these lenses right here are not expensive at all you can get a, you can get one of these on amazon right now with like 180 or one something like that um uh, the one that's highlighted in in amazon right now is 199 that's only because it's for it's the rf version it's for the um okay. for the um r6 and r5 uh cameras camera bodies but if you have an older um canon you can get one of these 199 dollars you can even find them on facebook market 50 bucks like i found one for like eBay. 40 bucks one time yeah, yeah ebay but yeah. that 1.8 yeah. aperture in comparison to a kit lens which is going to give you like maybe like a starting at a 3.5 aperture so we're looking at apertures you're looking at how much light can come in and just like mm -hmm. Mick said in the beginning start light <laughs> light is critical when it comes to photography so when you look at something that has a 1.8 aperture they even go as a uh, low as uh, God, they got a 1.250 out so we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about that today <laughs> but, <laughs> Canon does, yeah. one point, has a one well, point nikon has a 0.95 can nikon has a 0.95 I, I don't think it's a 50 but they do have a 0.95 lens i don't wow. know what you would do with that but yeah no the lower the number that's more light coming in so that's going to help you yeah. get that better image quality and also that's going to be better for low light situations so you won't have to carry around yeah. you know lights and flashes and all that when you're trying to shoot so that's the canon 50 millimeter and that's what that looks like and this yeah. is the great starter lens if you're trying to start out with photography and then you also probably want to combine that this is something that people don't really talk about is your uv filter why do we need a uv filter well one i can think of one reason yeah because yeah. I've, yeah. I've i've dropped the lens before <laughs> okay there we go there we go there we go yeah, yeah i have yeah, yeah. listen you you're gonna drop as much as you you want to be you know very protective of your gear you, you're gonna make a mistake something's gonna happen yeah. someone's gonna drop it for you <laughs> so these guys will protect some of that um mistakes from happening also what's what's another reason yeah. Biggs? honestly that's that's a big one right there um i only bought uv lenses because of that yeah um i don't currently have them on i probably as you were talking i was like oh i need to put them back on. <laughs> you need to invest into um, one <laughs> i need to invest because I, I took them off and I, I don't know where they are I, but, <laughs> but it protects from scratches it protects from drops um i will say if you're going to use uv lens or any any additional lens um filters mm -hmm. uv or invariable nd filters or anything like that mm -hmm. make sure that you're cleaning them consistently yes and, absolutely um, they, they can take away from the sharpness of, of your absolutely your, um, absolutely your, your image but but i would definitely say that for sure for for sure for sure yeah well, well since since you you just paved the way for for the next next topic or the next item yeah. so we got so by the way i when when we when we set up this live or talked about doing this live that night it was like 1 a.m and i i just went on amazon i just went ham <laughs> <laughs> i just start buying stuff off amazon so <laughs> next item we I'm have here um, i'm going to highlight it here in the carousel again guys if you're not on amazon live come in here 
over to Amazon Live so you can see exactly what gear we're highlighting, what gear we're talking about. So let me find it real quick. And here we go. This is a professional camera and lens cleaning kit that you can get from Amazon. Mm -hmm. And this is highly recommended. It comes with, you have your spray for your lenses or sometimes that, that wipe doesn't get everything all off. And so sometimes you gotta add some of that spray to it. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong camera. So there we go. It comes with, this little thing is actually a blower. So you squeeze it, kind of looks like the, the booger thing that you get out your kid's nose, but it's actually a blower. So it blows <laughs> air inside the, <laughs> I know it's, it's funny. It blows air inside of the uh, camera or lens or, or whatever, if there's any dust. And there's a couple other things in here. You, I think you have some sensor cleaning swabs, like some wet wipes. You have a micro uh, fiber fil uh, uh, cleaner in there. And then the little pin, I forget what the little pin does. I think you wipe the lens with it, if I'm not mistaken. I've seen I think the pins with before. The sensor. I'm, not, I'm not certain, yeah. Okay, I know it's either something with the lens or something with the sensor, but either way, this yeah. kit comes packed with a bunch of stuff that you can use to clean your, your lens or your camera. There's some more swabs. I think that's a little bag or something that comes in there as well. So you get some more larger microfiber uh, cloths. But this is nice, and I always like stuff that comes in a carrying case. That's just yeah. something that I, that, that I love. So it comes in a carrying case, has all the cleaning things that you need in there. Put the spray back in. So why why is cleaning essential? Um, you know, honestly, the, the practical reason is you're ensuring the longevity of your equipment. Right. right. You want to protect your investments. Right. And so you want to rid us rid it of any any dust or anything like that. I've been fortunate. I haven't had to clean my camera lens yet. Yeah. Um, and a part of that is ensuring that I have the proper cleaning. Let me say professional cleaning. Yes. Um, I have the proper cleaning equipment. Um, the also, you know, again, because of my environment around family members a lot, which they're also little kids and I don't want to be that guy who hogs all of his equipment and doesn't inspire the next generation. Yeah. So I'll let my, you know, my, my ne nephew and nieces or ne nephews and niece, you know, kind of touch the camera a little bit, not, not to, they can't handle it themselves yet, but you're going to get a fingerprint or two on that lens. And that mm -hmm. might be a, you know, grown adult fingerprint, or it might be a kid. doesn't matter. You want to, you want to correct that immediately, right? You want to get that that cleaned up, or your images aren't aren't going to come out right. Um, and so, yeah, just longevity, quality. You want to make sure that you have the proper cleaning equipment available. On and the I spot. I oh, have man, had like that happen to me. Yeah. I've had had that happen yeah. to me. Like I've, for some reason, I'm thinking the viewfinder was dirty. Like I'm looking inside oh, okay. the viewfinder. This yeah. is this is before mirrorless cameras. So I'm looking in the viewfinder and I'm thinking, all right, I'm trying to use my shirt and wipe it. <laughs> and I'm thinking it's dirty, but it's actually the actual camera itself is dirty. So the, the mirror inside is dirty. So oh, okay. the, all the pictures had this little smudge right there in the corner. And I actually had to put it inside of Photoshop just to get that off. So make sure that you have something to clean your lenses and stuff with. All right, so let's talk about the next uh, gear item. So we talked about cleaning, we talked about the Nifty 50, and there's another, um, so we talked about, I don't have it on the list, but if the 50 is too wide, I mean too, too um, close, yeah. then you can upgrade yeah. and get some wider lenses. So there also is the, um, actually I think I do have it. So. I just highlighted it is the, the RF 16 millimeter 2.8. Okay. So you don't get that 1.8 oh, aperture so that the uh, 50 has, but 2.8 is probably as high as I would go if I'm going to get or invest into a lens. I'm not getting anything higher than 2.8. 3.5, don't even waste your time. So the, the 2.8, you're still getting a lower aperture. You're not going to get that completely blurred out background that the 1.8 would give you. Then that's what they call 
portrait mode inside of um, the iPhone and Android. Oh, but yeah. but um, that uh, 1.8 will give you that blurred background. But the 2.8 aperture, it still gives you a little bit of blur, but it's also going to give you enough light coming in. And you can use that 16 millimeter for wide shots if you want to shoot like uh, agriculture. You have a large group of people in a wedding or something like that. That's where you can get that. That's yeah. bring that 16 millimeter out, and then you can get those wide shots, which the 50 won't be able to capture. And again, that 16 is also a prime. So we talk about prime lenses. Um, prime lenses do not zoom. So that's what basically what prime means. So you don't get a zoom like you have with like an 18 to 24 or something like that, or 50 to 300 millimeter. You get 50. That's it. You get 16. That's it. That's what. That's all a prime basically means. So. Yeah, yeah, that's 16, what you get. Two point eight. That's a great spot if you're thinking about doing uh, street photography. You know, if that you're too. Yeah, interested in street photography. That's a great focal lens. And two point eight is honestly, it's it's a good amount of light coming into that lens. Still, they use this term in photography, fast lenses. It's above me now, um, <laughs> but it's it's still. Uh, <laughs> It's still a, a good aperture rate um, where you can get that separation. But um, at 16, also, it's a small lens. Yes. So if you're yes. if you're literally one of those people who's packing light, mm -hmm. okay, I think I'm going to put that on a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> I like it. I like it. You, uh, <laughs> you, you can kind of move, maneuver around without people um, kind of staring at you. So mm -hmm. if you have a longer lens. Mm -hmm. Um, just a big setup, you know, with the microphone on top, or you uh -huh. have a big LED on top of your camera. People are going to be a little bit more leery about what your intentions are. Um, but if you have a smaller lens, they're probably going to think that you're not a professional. Bigger lenses, for some people, for some reason, people think they think, "Oh, let 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 me get out the way." And that's funny because yeah. I did I did rent during the graduation. I did rent a four hundred millimeter. 2.8 for Canon. And while that was great and people were like stepping aside, like, oh, he must be the professional. That thing hurts my back the entire time. And that thing has some weight on there. And I know now they probably have like stuff that can attach to mirrorless that are a lot lighter, but then there, that was the only thing they had. Canon's 400 millimeter lens was, I don't, it was just heavy. You know, that's the only thing I remember. That's Pictures were amazing though, Chris, because they have the two point eight. Yeah. You still get a little bit blurry yeah, background. Yeah. So, with the with the four hundred millimeter lens, I, I'm all the way back there in the back, somewhere behind everybody, and nobody knows that I'm shooting, and I'm getting like super close, super crisp pictures. So it was beautiful. Yeah. But um, since you talk about packing, that that's going to lead to our my next item that I have. So let me go ahead yeah. and, and highlight this in the carousel. So one thing you may need is a something to store your gear in when you're traveling, especially if you're yeah, going absolutely. to shoot on locations, you're going to shoot uh, street photography, like you mentioned, you're going to need something to pack your gear in. So I got a got a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So here we go. This is, let's see if I can come back out a little bit and see if we can focus or refocus. That seems focused enough. So your camera bag, camera bag is critical. It doesn't matter what camera bag you get. This particular one is a lot smaller and lighter. You have your slots on the side. You can put like some, um, the cleaning kits and things like that, or some microfibers in there on the side. Right here is where you'll clip your tripod if you have a tripod or something. And then you have your back braces for comfort. Um, then it clips in the front so you don't have to worry about losing it or, or whatnot. And then inside, oh, that's the wrong zipper, I think. See, I don't even know how to work the bag. <laughs> there should be, oh, I think that was right. That was right. Let's just new bag, new zippers. Okay. So you have all your slots here. So if you had your camera, you can 
put it here. You can adjust it how you want to. These um, these straps right here or sections are Velcro, so you can adjust them and put them where you want. So your gear just goes in there and you're good to go. So you pack all your stuff, pack all your, even here on the side, it has a another section where you can put gear in. You get a slot, a slot for like a compu small computer or an iPad or something like that. Put that in there and you're good to go. Now, I personally would like a bag that has a bigger laptop slot because if I'm traveling yes. on a go, I'm going on a shoot, then I want something I can bring my MacBook with. But if you're just starting out, you don't really have all that gear. This is a good option. I mean, it's only what, like 36 bucks and you can get that's, your that's camera, good. camera gear packed up, ready to go. Highly recommended because you don't want to be carrying everything around in the box or, you know, by hand. You don't want to do that. And then sometimes yeah. you say, hey, oh, I'm just going to grab my camera, my lens and, and head out the door. Sometimes uh, either you're, you left your batteries at home or you, you need an extra lens. You got you want to change up the situation and you don't have all your gear with you. So pack it all in the bag and then you're good to go on your shoots. So yeah. any any thoughts or or something on that you want to talk about yeah um couple things um well let me give you a horror story as to why you oh boy your, your, <laughs> your backpack <laughs> oh boy so i still have the bag that i'm, I'm talking about i, I don't want okay. to put the brand on there Ooh. i still use it till today okay um i like i like it still works for me so let me just put it like that okay okay but one of the things i didn't really think through it does it, it it's a bigger bag so i can't put my 16 inch macbook pro in there at that time of the story it was 13 inch okay um, and so we were in we were in um zurich switzerland okay right we're getting ready to fly out now my bag it, it doesn't open up the way that this one does where you can kind of access everything at once. It, there's an upper part where there's a pocket right there. There's a side slit for the, the, um, for the, the, the computer or tablet or whatever you want to put in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there, the lower part kind of opens up to, the, to that, a smaller version of that compartment there. And so we're packing up, getting ready to go. And I put my laptop in the, in the bag in the side slit, right? And um, yo, 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 for Kirk, how's it going, Kirk? Glad oh, to have Kirk. you. <laughs> Glad to have you. Yes, yo, sir, come on, yes, come sir. on over to Amazon, Amazon Live, sir. Come on over, yes, sir. Come on in the room. So, yeah, yeah so, yeah. so, no. so, yeah, I go ahead, go ahead. To, I forgot to zip up the bag. Oh, and the whole the hotel we were in, um, in Zurich. The floors was literally in the hotel room. They were concrete. Oh, there was some futuristic, modern oh, type man. of situation. So my laptop fell, and the corner of it hit the floor, and it never recovered. Oh, it never recovered. It, it oh man, it, it, it cracked. It cracked oh. a little bit, and I just had to leave it like that. It was. It was. It was. It was devastating. Um, but you know, now I, ha I think through my, the, the next bag I'm going to get, my laptop will be safe and secure on the inside. Now thinking about it, I travel on the plane with this. If someone knew about my bag, they can have easily unzipped it at, at, you know, I could be walking or in a busy car or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like Atlanta, they got the trains and someone could have just unzipped it and walked away with my laptop. Wow, it's not really secured. And so I like that the fact that that tablet laptop section of this bag is on the inside, mm -hmm. you know, so that's that's a great feature. I've, I've had a, a similar horror story. Uh, I, really? it, it wasn't it wasn't a camera bag, but it was actually a, a, um, a laptop bag. And I forgot yeah. to zip up the little slot. There was an actual a laptop slot and I forgot to zip that up. Yeah. And that camera, I mean, that laptop just came flying out and I was so upset because it was a brand new MacBook Pro. Ooh. And for some reason, I decided I wanted to take it out the case because, you know, it's so pretty. It's, it's nice and sleek. So I wanted to show it off. 
and then I, I messed up and, and, and it fell out the bag. It hit the corner and the newer the newer ones, this was, I think it was like a 2018 at the time. Newer ones, they're, they're a little bit, they're not as bad as the older ones. The older ones, you drop those, yeah. they're just they're just done for. So they did a little yes. bit better with the with the structure of it and to protect it. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a dent in the corner of there. And um yeah. yes, sir, Kirk's on Amazon Live. Awesome. Yo, Kirk, hey. if you are free, I'm gonna I'm gonna send the link, dude. Come on over. <laughs> if you are if you I'm you it looks like you it looks like you're done with your live, so so come on over to mine. <laughs> <laughs> so it did it did dent the the uh, corner of my laptop but thankfully it survived and was able to uh still function so that was awesome yeah. yeah so tip for those who are just starting photography or any gear make sure you protect your stuff zip it up uh clean protect it um even buy insurance if you need to get insurance that's that's another thing that people don't talk about you can get insurance from um sometimes if you like even if you buy from amazon there is a insurance that you can get to cover some of your gear so highly recommend that and also uh your home insurance like renter's insurance i know my renter's insurance like home site all state they will cover some gear as well so just make sure that you're reading the details to see if they cover like accidents and things like that because sometimes they're like yeah if you broke it yourself you know we're not going to cover it but in some cases there's insurances that you can buy that will cover accidents and, and, and things so that's that's highly recommended if you are kids in the house something like that you know especially i, I got a kid so i make sure all my stuff is locked away and i have insurance as well so highly recommend it all right so quick question for you. yes can you add stuff to the carousel? You, let's see. I think you can. The man to to right. to ask that question, hopefully, I, I is coming on out. the live. <laughs> 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 the man to ask that question is hopefully going to come on. But I, I, what I did first, I, I created, I created the list, and then I, uh, and then, then I can click on the items to highlight. But I'm not sure if I can add during the live. So that that would be a, a okay. question for Mr. Kirk Nugent. Okay. So let let's move forward. What's what's some other items? So here's here's another item I want I want to highlight. So here we go. We got the next one, which is move this out the way. Let's talk about fees. So you have here is your you have your multi-reader for your uh memory cards but let's mm -hmm. talk about the type of memory cards this is so there's different ones so you have mm -hmm. your cheaper ones which you can get for like 10 bucks but then you have this guy which is about a hundred something dollars so what is yeah. the difference between a more expensive memory card versus like a cheap one I can get, you know, I'm, I'm, I just want to grab it and go. Why would I need to invest in a higher price one? What is the difference? So that, you want to take a look and, and see. So, so I'm, my second camera does not autofocus. <laughs> so we're using manual First focus for now. Uh huh. Those read and write speed speeds. Let's go here. That's it. That's it. And I, I actually bought a, a, a like, $15 one and I don't have it right here with me. I can't remember where I put it, but if you look at a lower cost one, what kind of read and write speeds are we looking at makes? Oh my goodness. It's been a while since I've looked at, at cheap SD cards. <laughs> uh 50 60 somewhere in that in that realm. so <laughs> so the one that i purchased the one that i purchased was actually 90. so 90 okay. um write speed and so when you're looking at like let's let's even say for example we're talking we're gonna we were gonna talk about the the r6 so let's say you yeah. get an r6 the r6 has excuse me r6 has two sd card slots mm -hmm. and it can also, if you put it in sport mode or you could be, you should be able to hold the shutter down and then that's needed, especially if you're, if you're shooting sports, because that thing is going to yeah. shoot and it's going to just yeah. snap a ton of pictures before you can even blink. Yeah. So what happens is if you buy a lower price, um, SD card with a low write speed, 
once you lift right. your hand off that trigger, your camera is going to be like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's going to have a stroke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason is because yeah. there's not enough read and write speed to write those pictures yeah. to the SD card in the amount of time that your camera is taking pictures. So your camera is literally moving faster than your SD card can think. And he's like, hold on, you're, you're shuckling rocks in here and I still haven't put these in the place that they need to go. So with the higher price SD card, so this one is, this package that I have highlighted is 159. It comes with the, the SD reader and it comes with the SD card. So with this one, you have 300 megabytes of write speed. So that means mm -hmm. you got a camera that's that's taking pictures as that fast. It's coming. It's like, all right, we got it. We we writing as soon as you you snap it. We good. So there's no lag. And I've 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 made this mistake before. I've purchased a a, a cheaper SD card. Even when you're shooting video, that's another thing. You're shooting these mm -hmm. videos that yes. with 4K, 8K resolution, especially if you're using the Black Magic uh, camera. You're using those mm -hmm. those cheaper SD cards. They're either going to lock up on you and you're going to lose all your footage. And this has happened before because whew, we're not going to talk about any more horror <laughs> stories right now. <laughs> either it will not save the footage because the SD card can't write it in time or you get drop frames. If it's another term of video drop frames or you're it just will take a long time. They like like it's almost like buffering for a movie. If you're watching online, it will take a long time to, to save it. Or sometimes it just won't save at all. So I've I've have I've experienced both. So that's why it's recommended if you're gonna have a camera. If you're shooting, even it doesn't matter if you're shooting sports. If you if you you want to have something that can save those uh, pictures quickly. So that's why these are recommended. All right. Any thoughts or you want to add any additions for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 want the highest probability that you you're going to execute on your vision um and getting a quality sd card and that's, that can, also can we can we write can i need to write down these things that you're saying <laughs> <laughs> i need to put them on a t-shirt say that what say that one more time say that can you repeat that you, you want the highest probability to execute on your vision the highest right? probability to execute on your vision wow yeah and 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 I've experienced this, and I, I was fortunate to experience this in a safer situation um, because I was at, at a, a baseball game and mm -hmm. I took my camera out uh, just to test out. I think I, my boy lent me a 70 to 200 uh, lens and I mm -hmm. just wanted to try it out. Um, it was a free ticket, first of all. Uh, so it didn't cost me anything but the moment my SD card failed. It was one of the cheaper oh. ones and I was just starting off. You said it um, was one of the cheaper failed. ones? It was one of the cheaper okay. ones. Okay. And I didn't know, I didn't know about this at all. You know, so I learned a lot of this trial by fire. Uh -huh. um, but uh, I realized then, okay, you got to invest in some quality um, in some quality SD cards because uh -huh. it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't make much sense for you to invest a thousand dollars into a camera body right and exactly a few more hundred or even another thousand dollars into a lens for you to go cheap on an sd card yes it, yes it, it it doesn't it doesn't you know it doesn't make sense so definitely want to want to make sure that and then also in some of the sd cards if you keep all of the paperwork Cause there are more, look, there's no SD card on the planet that will not, that, that has a hundred percent success, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, they, it's just a matter of when, not just if it's a matter of when and you want to prolong the let the when as much as you can. Absolutely. But if you keep the paperwork in that packaging, there are some steps there available provided by the, the makers of, of the SD card that walks you through how to retrieve, um, like lost images. Now everything is not guaranteed, but yes, there's at least a plan in place. So right, exactly. Keep your packaging. Exactly. Yeah. That's a good point because I I've, I have had that happen as well. See, I got a lot of experience <laughs> in stories. I've had had this happen, and I've I actually have had to purchase some recovery software to get yeah. some of those pictures back because this 
was a, a paid paying client. And so mm -hmm. I had to do it <laughs> at this point. I was ready to spend whatever I had to do to get those pictures back. Cause boy, there's nothing more exciting than you paying for something, especially pictures for like a wedding or something like that. And you don't have the, the stuff to, to give to them. So that's why I recommend like, quickly make a backup if you don't have a camera that's saving like duplicates i usually i use that's why i like to get bodies that have two camera slot two card slots because i have i have a duplicate of all the pictures exactly. one sd card fails i got the other sd card just in case but if you don't have that as soon as you're done take the sd card put it in your computer back it up because you never know what might happen also, since we're talking about Do you have a hard drive on there, yeah, I was gonna so ask. I, I, I yes, I have, I have, oh, I have okay. a hard All drive right. on there. But before we go to the hard drive, since we're still talking about SD cards, I'm gonna show you one more thing that you need to get, and go right here. So let me ask you a question: How how many times have you lost or misplaced an SD card? I'm going to be honest. I don't know if I actually keep track of my SD card, especially now that my wife is shooting. I'm just like, just, let's just pull it together. Yes. We'll yes. There. Exactly. <laughs> Point exactly. Because yeah. I am the same way until I got one of these guys right here. This guy is your SD oh, card case. So all of your SD cards, even the smaller cards, you can see in between here. You have your smaller SD cards and the, what do you call the micro SD, I believe. Those two can go in there, but then you have the bigger one that goes on top. So you fit those in there and they also have labelers in here. So you can label exactly what the SD card is. And then you got another side for some more. So this has been a lifesaver because what I usually do is SD cards are going in my pocket. <laughs> After a shoot, they're in my pocket or they're sitting on top of my desk somewhere. And then I'm like, ah, let me grab that because I need to shoot something real quick. Let me just grab the SD card, pop it in there. So I never know where SD cards are. And so this is helpful. Pop your SD cards in there and it clicks like that and locks. And this is waterproof. So you don't have to worry about out in the rain and something happens. Everything is still secure. So that is, and did I highlight that? I don't think I highlighted that for you guys. So let me go ahead and highlight that real quick. Mm -hmm. There you go. So that's it. 10 bucks, save your life trying to find where your SD cards are. So that's, that's that right there. And I've lost a ton of SD cards. Let's be honest. Before I got this, like I lost a ton of them and buying, keep buying SD cards, especially if you're buying these guys right here. They're not cheap. There's a hundred and something dollars for SD cards. So you want to make sure you hold on to those guys. And then trust me, if you're, if you're spending this much for SD card and not getting the cheaper ones, you're going to buy this <laughs> uh, super helpful. Yeah. All right. So we are getting close to our time. So let's, let's wrap up with a few more items. So again, I just highlighted the hard drive storage is important. I'm not going to put that on screen because I, I already have it plugged up. I'm using it. So storage is critical. <laughs> um, I went and just got a two terabyte SSD because it's a lot faster when you're dealing with uh, uh, high, uh, higher resolution files. You're going to need something that you can send all that information quickly. Just like the SD card, you want to have something that has high read and write speed. So that's why I recommend an SD versus a um, a cheaper, you know, regular hard drive. You, you can get the regular hard drives for like, you know, 30, 40 bucks, but the SSD hard drives are going to give you that faster write speed. So it's highly recommended. And sometimes you may want to have it's safer too. Yes. And so when we talk about the technology behind the SSDs, you have less moving parts. The more moving parts you have in the device, you know, stuff is going to break down faster. So you have your, your regular hard drives, like the bigger ones, um, those have a lot more moving parts. The SSDs, they call them like flash storage now, I believe, but SSDs usually have less moving parts inside. So they usually last a lot longer than regular hard drives. So those are highly recommended if you're going to be backing up your data. And then 
I would go a step further, have a backup of a backup if that's super important information yes. that you're yeah, using. Yeah, yeah. So even if you have your, your main SSD hard drive, you can go and get a regular hard drive if you want to just to have some extra storage mm -hmm. because I know the SSDs are a little bit more pricey and then the regular hard drives are on a cheaper end. So you can buy both, you can get one SSD, one super large HDD is what they're called, and then you can back up Extra, have extra backup for all your files um, at least three. three at least three so your ssd your regular hard drive and then cloud storage <laughs> so, so if something happens you have the cloud backup because someone yeah. who's in the cloud whoever they are has a backup to the cloud <laughs> so you always you always have some type of backup um yeah. Real quick, let, let's let's speed through some things. Next thing I would recommend is a tripod. Oh, so absolutely. You have no idea what or when you might be shooting any type of thing. So you may want to absolutely. shoot something that requires your camera to be super steady, especially if you like to do like time lapse, stuff like that. Uh, if you're shooting the, sh uh, the moon, stars, things like that, you're going to have to have your camera steady on a tripod. So long exposure. Yeah. Yes. All of this. Yes. Let me turn it this way because bam. So we're going to take this out and there is no specific reason why I got this brand other than it has if you look in the in the carousel, it has a ball head and the legs can come apart, like spread out really wide. So you don't want to you don't want to get a video tripod when you're shooting. That's not very helpful. OK, so this is what it looks like. Your legs come out and then they'll lock in place. And I won't focus my camera in a minute, but the super important thing is the top of your tripod, this guy right here. And the reason is you want to have all degrees of where you can position your tripod. So here you can adjust it. You see how you can move that. You can't really do that with a video uh, tripod. And then this tart right here, I believe flips out like this. And then you have your release plate. Sorry, I'm all, I'm all off the camera. So I have your release plate here that slides on and then boom, this locks in place and that will keep your camera secure from falling. And then you can position it. Like if you're shooting, you want to shoot down or something like that. Or if you want to shoot up in the sky, that's where you can adjust it accordingly. So these are recommended. You don't have to buy this specific brand. But this is super helpful because you can shoot pretty much anything that you want to shoot with a tripod like this. And my camera is not that wide, but you can take a look at the pictures and see exactly that what you can do with it. And I believe I believe this can also convert to a monopod as well. Yeah, Based I saw that the pictures. Picture. I that's, believe that's that this can convert to a monopod. Yeah. So what the monopod will give you the ability to do is just just one like stick, basically. So you can stand or mm -hmm. hold it with one stick. And that's super helpful if you're like on the go and you don't really like want a full tripod, but you want to have some type of support that is helpful as well. So Kirk's like, you're all having too much fun. Yes, Kirk, we are. <laughs> this is super fun. You know, we're always we're all gearheads over here. Yeah. yeah. What I like about this one right here, um, I have a monopod, uh, but it doesn't have the ball, the ball head on it, right? No, that and yeah, that so, that ball head is is critical. That's a game changer right there. It is a game changer, um, and and it looks super compact. Like I would have no issue. Ex exactly, with that it's super there. compact. So on. those legs, you saw when I took it out, the legs the gate go in. Yeah. So right now they're right. out and then they lock in place. You have these locks here. So once they're out like this, sorry, I keep hitting my microphone. You just you press this down and then you're able to, to move it back to, to back where to it stores up. That's 
that's, that's and then it actually you have let me see if i can show you without destroying my monitor so you actually have like two locking positions so let's say if you want it you want it half your legs halfway out but then you can lock it here but then you can also lock it in the next point up here as well so it locks there okay. and then it locks here and then it won't move so that's super helpful i've never seen that before usually it's like one position and that's the only position you can lock yeah. it in and then when you're done fold it back up like this yeah yeah that's 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 good and that's then if good. you notice that on our bag that we got there's a area where you can Spot. clip that the tripod on so boom see how small it is strap that yeah. into your bag and you're good to go and then it came with this this little cover to protect the ball head and yeah, that's super important because there's fluid inside the ball head so you don't want that to get damaged so that covers it and then you have a little strap here and then you can put that on your bag and you're good to go so that was i thought that was super awesome that's actually, that's so that's helpful again if you're trying to shoot things and you need some support and especially if you're in low light situations, putting something on a tripod mm -hmm. will help you get those uh, cleaner images. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna wrap up with the last item that I have, I believe, which I is- I got one that, that's not on there. You got one? Okay, what you got? I got one, quickly. Um, so this, this right here, I'm not gonna show the company name. This right here is my three- Let me switch you to the other scene, okay. Um, so, uh, oh, here we go. I know exactly so, yeah, so what that is. I know exactly what that is. Yeah. Um, I guess I, I'd have to open it up to show everybody what it looks like. Oh, this is actually, yeah, three in one, two in one. Yeah. So it opens up like this mm -hmm. and there's a silver part inside a black part and a white, right? Um, and I can actually, if I can quickly show my share my screen yeah 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 we're gonna uh, uh as a matter of fact yeah, let me let it. me do this let's let's switch you okay. here to let's switch this to you okay Boom. can you see my my google photos ah uh, i see it hold on let me do this okay bam okay so this right here was taken in 2017. Um, days after I got my camera, all I had was my camera and my reflector mm -hmm. um, and natural light. Exactly. So you mentioned two um, things. He, uh, based off what I'm looking at, uh, notice yeah. he's wearing a hat. You're outdoors in the hat. sun. Outdoors. You have your yes. camera and you have your reflector. Why is this critical like right now? Because you're about to get some some, some right. interesting tips right here. All right. So a couple things. This is the 51.8. 51.8. So I can see that that blurred background. Like that's awesome. The blurred background. Um, he's. I have him in the shade a little bit. Okay. Um, but I want to create a little bit more separation beyond the blur, right? Okay. Um, you see the sun's kind of coming in from the left side, um, which would mean that his right eye um, would be totally, you know, in the shadow. In the, yeah. in, in the shadow. Especially yeah. with him wearing the so, cap. Yeah. Especially with the cap. Um, so I use the silver side of this reflector to shine a little bit of light there, um, which would keep my ISO down, my shutter speed at a good, a good spot. I can shoot wide open and I can get some, some details that I would not have gotten because my camera's just taking in all of this data. Right. All of this data right there. I mean, all the way up into his ports, right? And this is not a shot of somebody who's six years into mm -hmm. shooting. At this point, I had my camera for about four days. Wow. Yeah, four so days. I bought my camera and yeah, I bought my camera. I think on a Tuesday or Wednesday, and we were leaving for Jamaica on Friday. Friday. This is Saturday. this is a great shot. This is a great shot. 
yeah. and with with yeah, with that reflector face. you were able to shine reflect the sunlight into his face correct and into get rid face. of those shadows so he didn't even have to take the the, the cap off when you still correct. got a good shot without all those hard shadows in his face so there are some shadows correct. but if you were not yeah. to use a reflector it'd be a different totally different shot his face would be completely right. dark and, and that at that point i didn't have you know uh lightroom photoshop or anything like that so this i didn't edit at all right uh, no edit you don't get a lot of photographers that says that but Ooh. you know <laughs> no i, 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 I and I really, i'm like that too i, I shoot for in camera meaning i i like to make make sure i have the shot correct. that i want before i bring it into the editing suite so it looks correct. like you did a good correct. job of making sure all the shadows that you did not want were eliminated before you you didn't even right. say so you didn't even edit this this is awesome i didn't even edit this one um and so yeah so getting it right means less work on the back end exactly um and this is this is this has been one of my favorite shots since then man and so that's awesome. That's get awesome. A, get a reflector. Um, uh, something simple. Again, this is packing light. Yes. This, I mean, this thing. You know, I've used. I used it on a shot a couple uh, short photo shoot a couple weeks ago because in DC, you have to have a permit to use um, off camera flash or anything like that. Right. I don't want to go through that hassle. Yeah. I had my wife holding, you know, the reflector. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And well, then you yeah. can also use a reflector for video shoots, anything. The reflector yes. doesn't, yes. you don't have to hold it. There are some, some stands you can buy that will hold Stand. the reflectors yeah. and you can position them to reflect light. And that will eliminate the need for you to have to buy a ton of different lights because you can reflect to a different position or a different angle if you want to and help fill in those slat and those shadows without having to buy extra lights. So since we're talking about light, we're going to talk about our last item. And yeah, yeah, this right here is the Godex AD 400 Pro. Boy. This is the big yeah. boy, but it actually is yeah, not yeah. that big. It, it's it's pretty light for a a uh, for a pretty light for a light. <laughs> Throw some my own puns in there. So why do we recommend something like this over a cheaper softbox? long bulbs i've seen a lot of them on amazon oh. they're like 30 bucks the long plug yeah. also so let, let's talk about why you should get something like this so this is a great amazon purchase I, I, lights can get very expensive this is not expensive yes. in comparison to some other lighting situation i've seen especially what the big boys use they usually use something like pro photos those can get yeah. in the 3000 range for for one one easily. light easily. easily so this is a this is a good light kit so what what's good about something like this like one you have a battery pack there is no way you should be running around if you're shooting one on site you know at a wedding maybe you're using street photography or something like that you can't run around trying to find a plug to plug in some power and to get no. some light so that's why you want to get something that has a battery pack so you can take on the go quickly set up and get your shot that you need and then if you look also in the carousel i have it paired with a godox softbox so we're not going to show that because we don't have time and i actually already have it set up is the godox softbox is also a quick setup so i don't know if you've seen other softbox that have the, the rods that you have to put in manually and to, just to set it up I've seen a lot of those but they have newer ones out there where you just open it up and snap it in place and you're good to go. Open it up, snap it in place. You can get set up and on site to shoot within seconds versus I'm struggling taking all this time to set up my softbox <laughs> or carry it around and it's, it's, it's cumbersome. So you can either you can break it down and set it up within seconds. So you want to pair that with a, something like this. So you, when you're shooting on location, yeah. you can travel and transfer it quickly. You don't have to worry about, all right, I got to set up all my gear and then then you're ready to shoot, especially if you're shooting like after a wedding where all the family is, is gathering and you're trying to find plugs and you're trying to find a, a place to position all your lights and you got somebody working with you. Hey, can you put this softbox together for me? Nope. All you got to do, quick setup, boom, good to go. 
also with this uh, Godox, you can, I believe you can adjust the temperature. Sometimes with other lights, you don't have no temperature adjustments. And with it being digital, you can pair that with a wireless uh, flash uh, controller, which I believe in this package in the carousel, it is included. This one that I got doesn't have it. But what the flash controller will let you do, you can, you can combine multiple lights, even if it's a different brand, as soon as it flashes, all of them flash. So that's what the flash controller does. It helps you control light. So you can't do that with these other lights because then you have to buy a separate device to control that device when you can just buy one device that has everything built in. So that's what you're paying for. You're paying for the technology, you're paying for the, the quick setup, you're paying for the battery. So that's another thing we did not mention today, batteries make sure you buy oh, yeah, backup batteries yeah. buy a battery pack yeah. for your camera yeah. buy extra batteries for your lights or whatever whatever you need buy a battery yeah. charger if there's something specific that you need to charge your batteries for buy all the the, the backup power you need because there's some situations you thought you were gonna your, your shoot wasn't gonna last as long especially weddings they go over time all the time so you want to make sure that you're buying backup power buy a battery brick for your camera as well put all those batteries in there and then have them ready just in case you need them. All right. So that's, that's the light and anything you want to add mix. Uh, look for anyone who is just starting off with off camera, um, flash. It's the same principle. Start off very simple, right? Um, don't, don't, don't try to get to the deep end. So it's all very simple so that you can learn how to maximize your light. So this right here is a really good. It's kind of like the, the middle ground of power uh, uh -huh. for off camera flashes. So it's yes. not quite the 200, which I have. Um, and it's not the 600. Yeah, um, this this is this is 400 watts that. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good amount yeah. of, of power for what you need. And, and we're, we're talking about flash this is not a yeah this is not a um video light this is a strobe Correct. light this is gonna flash Correct. and it's and that's it it's i don't know you may be able to set it to uh do the um where it will stay on continuous light is what i was looking for continuous light yeah but there is a mode on here where you can flash and i believe there's a mode where you can do continuous light so that 400 there's, there's watts modern light with those i believe there's a modeling light modeling like okay yeah 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 i'm not sure if it's as powerful as kirk says studio. lovely yes bro yeah, this yeah. this right here ah uh, I'm, I'm we're gonna have to do another day where we just open this guy <laughs> we, we, we're way over time right now yeah, yeah. but again you don't have to purchase this exact light but just make sure when you're considering getting light that you could consider all those different factors you don't want to carry something that has that needs a plug you want to carry something that at least has battery power where you can transport you know anywhere you need because when you're in the situations you don't want to miss a moment especially and i keep going back to weddings because that's a that's a big thing with photography there's people who are going to need wedding photography and i've been in situations where people are plugging there they, they bring in extension cords they're bringing all this power and things like that when there is a simpler method, just buy the lights to have the built in power and built in uh, battery packs. You plug you, you put in your battery, boop, turn it on. Some of you have controllers. You, you turn your power on with the controller. Like I have my light right here. It comes with a remote. I can turn it off and on just like that. You don't have to worry about, you know, saving. Oh, there you go. That's it. So that's these are the technologies. These are the reasons why you need to get gear like this versus the cheaper. Cheaper isn't always better when it comes to photography and gear. You want to get something that's practical that can work for you. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. So that is all the time we have for today. Again, we've gone over time and this has been fun. <laughs> this has been really sure. fun. Sure. So, um, we are going to we may come back next week you, you free next week mix we might come back yeah i think i might be free next you might week. be free okay so we might come back yeah. again and hopefully we can get kirk on the show too i know kirk's always doing his oh, show yeah, but yeah, yeah. we need to get kirk on the show too oh, yeah. so next week we don't know what we're talking about next week but we're going to talk about some gear i know i want to do a talk about some home gear 
um, for apartments and, and homes, some technology that you don't have to run wires. I've seen uh, some ring cameras and things like that. You have to run wires to connect it. So we're going to talk about some wireless gear that can do the same things. So you can just plug it up and you're good to go. And we're going to talk about technology for new parents too. So we're going to do a, a show about mm -hmm. that as well. So I, I got some stuff that I've, that I've used that has been helpful as a new parent. So we're going to talk about that stuff too. So, all right, guys, thanks again, Migs. Migs, you want to um, shout out where you can, they can reach you if they have any uh, photography questions or if they want to fly you out for a shoot or something, man? Yeah, you know, the, uh, the easiest way to really get in touch with me is to find me on Instagram. I'm, I'm going to get my website up uh, shortly. Uh, but right now, you can find me on Yes, I'm Migs. Uh, yes, I am M I G G S on instagram um and that's that's easily the best way to to reach me awesome awesome and also yes, you can follow him here on the show too because he's going to be back and yes, follow sir. me if you want some more tips about technology again we're helping entrepreneurs and business owners better their technology and their experiences so this is what it's all about this is why we chop it up and talk about tech again because we love gear we're gearheads this is what we do so thanks again for watching guys and we will see you in the next live have a good one guys